There's a new area to watch in the tropics, and it's right off of the Florida coast. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of areas that the National Hurricane Center has highlighted. The first one, the new development, is this broad area south of Bermuda, but it could develop anywhere near the southeast corner of the United States. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you the development chances there and look at some modeling, some ensemble forecasts as well. Then we're going to jump down into the Caribbean, Invest 95L. That's that disturbance we've been talking about for the last few days. That is going to be entering the Caribbean soon, bringing some heavy rain regardless of development. And then we're going to talk about Saharan dust. It has been prolific in parts of the United States, especially South Florida and the Caribbean. This is going to expand toward Texas and the North Gulf Coast over the next few days. First and foremost, again, if you find this video helpful and you want to stay updated on the tropics, on all things weather, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you find this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. All right, so here is the new area that the Hurricane Center highlighted. We were talking about this during Tropics Watch Live. It happens every Monday at 11 o'clock on this channel. Here we go. There's X marks the spot. Little tropical wave, little weak trough of low pressure right there. It is nothing to write home about right now, but it's this yellow blob area, if you will, and for the northern Bahamas off the Florida coast and then right up the southeast corner of the United States coastline there. This is the area where that system could develop over the next few days. Again, chances are low right now. We're going to talk about why that is in a second, given a 20% shot for development over the next seven days from the National Hurricane Center. We're gonna look at some models. Some do develop this thing, some take it in different spots. It's very early going. So again, this is the time that I always caution, pay attention to your source and pay attention to what you're seeing on social media. But here we go, going forward, we're looking for the brighter colors. The brighter colors represent stronger spin in the atmosphere when they are consolidated, when it's like a nice red ball. That means that we're going to have that organized low-level center. We could have that circulation right at the surface. So first and foremost, we're going to fast forward to July 26th. And here is our guy right here. It's hanging out. You can kind of see that color. It is very broad at this point. It is weak. It is unorganized. Okay, so we are going to break through, break this down here. Notice these arrows coming in from the east, that little nudge up north, and then back down to the south and west. That is an open wave, so this is going to be the tropical wave here. Again, for this to be designated as a tropical system, depression, storm, or hurricane, you need to have those winds closed and be moving counterclockwise. We do not have that at that point. Watch what happens as we go forward. Here we go in the 27th. It still appears, anyway, that we have an open wave, but certainly the circulation is getting stronger. You start to see the darker red start to pop up, but it's not consolidated just yet. Until we get into the realm of the 28th, maybe 29th, and then there we go. The European solution of this system does keep it away from Florida. Wait till the GFS solution, though. And then slides it up towards South and North Carolina. But you see that circulation now. So we've gone from that open wave to a circulation. So the European model does want to develop this into something. Now... The strength remains to be seen. We're going to talk about that in just one second. First, I want to show you the GFS representation here. So again, we talk about these being the two main models. A lot of times that we look at come hurricane season before we get into the hurricane forecast realm, the hurricane models anyway. But here we go. GFS, July 27th, couple days. Still that very weak open wave right there. It's even weaker than the European solution. But you see it here on July 27th, so it's now heading toward land because it did not make that curve. The GFS wants to take it right on in to south and central Florida. You see that right there. So that's going to be something to watch. Now, it doesn't look too terribly strong on either solution. So again, that's something to be mindful of that we're not at this point anyway looking at some behemoth storm coming in, even if it does come to Florida or the Carolinas. But... There's a lot to be ironed out with this as this is just a very weak, broad area of low pressure out in the southwest Atlantic right now. But something to be mindful of because there you go, at least on the GFS representation, it has something coming in, coming on shore in Florida or the Carolinas over the next couple of days, late week, maybe into the weekend. I want to show you this now. At this stage in the game, I always preach this, ensembles are the thing to look at. Basically, it's just like a band. Many members make up, many members of the ensemble make up the 
the what we're looking at here. This is going to be the European Ensemble. So there's 52 different members, 51 different members in there, each with a different representation. Different initial conditions are kind of put into these things because we don't have a lot of information about these storms when they're out at sea or just getting to, getting going and they don't have a low-level, well-defined circulation just yet. So we put in some different initial conditions and if they kind of make a consensus towards somewhere then we have a pretty good confidence we get extra confidence that something is going to happen so again this is the european representation and notice most of those members that do develop this system keep it weak i think right in here 1003 is the strongest the millibars again the lower the pressure the stronger the storm that could be tropical storm status there off the carolina coast but nonetheless, most of these members, if not all of the members, turn it away from Florida and then send it up towards the Carolinas. I want to show you, point out these colors here. They represent the pressure. Okay, so this is basically here. This is the Bermuda High kind of nudging. It doesn't push far inland, so it does allow this system to kind of go up and around the Bermuda High. The GFS is different, but you're going to notice something here too. The GFS solution really doesn't develop it. I showed you the operational model, the parent model, but its ensembles, at least on this run here, really don't develop it. But here's the deal. Notice these pink colors here representing the higher pressure the further right on the screen that we go. That's where that Bermuda High is. It does connect to land. So if something does develop here, the GFS solution anyway would want to nudge it further to the west like it does with the disturbance heading into Florida. So again, certainly something to watch over the next couple of days. So again, just keep that in mind, keep in the back of your head that there could be something lurking off of the Florida coast as we get towards the end of the week and into the weekend. Water temperatures are through the roof. We have documented this a lot this hurricane season it's why we got brett and cindy so early in such a weird place but look at these water temperatures off the southeast corner of the united states there's the gulf stream highlighted in purple temperatures into the mid to even upper 80s right off the central florida coast closer to the shoreline a little bit cooler of course but low to mid 80s still plenty warm to fuel something given extra environmental conditions. So we're going to keep a close eye on this. Again, it's nothing to freak out about. It's nothing to run to the stores or anything at this point. We are watching this closely, of course. But at this point, anyway, if something does try to develop, it does look like guidance is showing this thing on the weaker side. But it's something to not let your guard down because the water temperatures are so insanely warm off of the Florida coast. On to Invest 95L. This is that secondary disturbance. This is the one that's been highlighted for a little bit longer from the National Hurricane Center. And you see it right there. Some thunderstorms blossoming. This is also very unorganized. Some of the thunderstorm activity, though, moving into the Windward Islands, Trinidad and Tobago and Dominica, Martinique, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Barbados. We are seeing the thunderstorms there as that kind of pushes into the Eastern Caribbean. Development chances aren't zero. We might be able to get a tropical depression out of this over the next couple of days. You see the chances as designated by the Hurricane Center at 20%. But regardless if it does become a depression, it does get that well-defined low-level center with storms around its center. Again, defining it tropical. Impacts are going to be the same for the islands. Some heavy rain, a couple inches in the islands, and then some gusty winds, 30, maybe 40 miles an hour. Again, from Grenada, from Martinique. Dominica, Dominica, and then getting into Trinidad and Tobago as well. So again, just keep that in mind. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing to write home about, but certainly impactful for you if you're doing anything, if you're living there, if you're going on vacation there, just know that there's a healthy tropical wave, at least sliding through the islands. On to the Saharan dust. The thickest, most dense plume of dust has arrived in the United States. You see that brown over Florida, air quality issues in South Florida especially. Typically, we don't see that with the dust as most of it's suspended, but this time around, it is thick enough to be impacting the air quality, especially, especially for sensitive groups. So again, keep it easy in Central and South Florida for the next couple of days, especially with the heat around too. Note that we have more of that dust starting to stream west into the western Gulf of Mexico. We have some getting up into Louisiana. This is going to be pushing into Texas. I want to show you that forecast here in terms of the dust. And there you go. Later on, Monday, July 24th, look at what happens here. We see more of that dust pinwheeling into Texas towards San Antonio, towards Houston, 
New Orleans, you might catch a little bit of a break. It does become a little less prolific in Florida, but you see that white stripe up through Jacksonville. And then another round toward Miami as well. Orlando, just a little bit of haze in your sky still by Thursday. And then we start to get this a little less prolific. I think everybody along the Gulf Coast starts to take a break. In the Atlantic Coast, there's 3 o'clock on Sunday, July 30th. A lot of that dust kind of scours on out of here and dissipates as it moves away. Real quick to end things, I want to just kind of recap where we've been or give you an update on where we've been. Of course, we've had five named storms. Again, not shown here is that unnamed storm back in January. So we technically have five named storms, even though it didn't get a name. I know it's weird, but that's how the Hurricane Center does things. So it's technically five named storms. Dawn was the first hurricane of the Atlantic hurricane season, about two weeks ahead of schedule from climate norms anyway, when we typically see the first hurricane, really about three weeks, because August 11th is that uh, date on average. Where we stand in terms of the best metric in terms of measuring the hurricane season, again, not on an impact scale, because it doesn't tell you where the hurricanes were and if they impacted anybody, but accumulated cyclone energy is something that we use to kind of measure the intensity of the hurricane season. And once it becomes a tropical storm, we start to measure that. So it's based on strength, it's based on longevity, and you see it there, uh, 2023 to date, we have the number of 16. The average is 8.6. So we are well above the norm already. And it's only July. El Nino is here. It's strengthening, which typically helps to increase wind shear in the basin. But the Atlantic is so hot. Again, we've talked about it all year long, all season long, and even before the season. What will win? The wind shear associated with El Nino or the extremely and in some cases record hot temperatures of the Atlantic Ocean. Hey, thank you guys so much for tuning in again. If you found this content helpful, please hit subscribe if you want to stay updated on all things weather as we continue to move through hurricane season. Again, the peak of hurricane season, September 10th. Just keep that in mind if you want to stay updated without all the garbage, without all the hype out there on social media. You've come to the right place. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. We really do appreciate that. It helps us out a lot. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll keep you posted and we'll catch you next time.